to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Children are a gift from God. The fruit of the womb is its reward. Psalm 127, verse number 3. We welcome you today to our study about the truth on abortion. Friends, we're thinking about a very serious subject today, a subject that society is considering, and a subject that the Bible speaks on. God's truth can be found on abortion, and we want to consider what the Scripture has to say on this subject. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. We want to encourage you, if you don't have your Bible, to have it handy, because we want to let the Bible and God's Word be the final authority on all our subjects in this series of lessons. As always, today's lesson is being brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Churches of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether it be on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night for Bible study, you'll find people there who love God, who are concerned about souls, and who more than anything want to help men and women go to heaven. If you'd like to have a Bible study, or would like to learn more about the church or God's plan of salvation or maybe these subjects that we're thinking about in this series of lessons. Again, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your area who'd be happy to sit down and just open up the Bible with you. Friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd also like to help you in your journey to know God and His Word better. Won't you visit our website thegospelofchrist.com. We have over 500 lessons online. We have studies on all the books of the Old and New Testament, a wide variety of good topical studies, and they're all free of charge. You can access them from our website. You can fill out our media request form. We'll send you a digital download. Or if you need a copy on DVD or CD, We'll even mail that to you free of charge, simply to help you help us to learn God and His Word better. And so check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. You can write to us or call us at the information given on the screen as well. And our goal here at the Gospel of Christ is just simply to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We're just an evangelistic work. We're trying to reach men and women with the good news of Jesus Christ. And so today I know we're considering a subject that is rather controversial, but we want to speak God's truth in love. Ephesians 4.15 Out of love for unborn children, out of love for families, and out of love for God's creation, mankind. We want to kindly say, but simply say, what the Bible has to teach about the subject of abortion. And so what exactly is that? When we talk about abortion, what exactly do we mean by that? Abortion, when it's commonly used, refers to the deliberate early ending of a pregnancy which results in the death of an embryo or a fetus. Basically, a mother may decide or a family may decide they don't want to have that baby. And so there are doctors you can go to, there are places you can go, and they will basically, inside the mother's womb, end that baby's life. That baby will die, will be taken out, and the embryo or the fetus will be done away with. And so the life of a human being is being ended by the early termination of medical doctors and others today causing that. And so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the idea of abortion. And today there are two big sides in the argument. There are those who are pro-choice which say it's the woman's right, it's the mother's right, Nobody else can say that she can't do that. And in our climate today, if you say that's wrong, people just kind of want to cancel you and don't want anything to do with you. 
And then there's the other side. The other side that says life is precious. Life is a gift from God. And that men and women shouldn't murder one another, shouldn't be taking that life. And it's not the mother's choice. That life is given by God. And there's a responsibility when you enter into actions which cause pregnancy, there's responsibility and consequences to that. And you can't just terminate a life like it's an animal or something else and everything be okay with that. And so there are two various sides to the issue. But friend, there are often common reasons that are given uh, to justify abortion. And you hear these quite regular. Sometimes people say it's okay for abortion to be done because a baby is not a life. Well, is that really true? Friend, we're going to ask today from the Scripture, is it true that a baby inside the womb is not life? That it's not a human being? That it, it, it has no feeling and that someone can just end that without any consideration? Sometimes people say, well, the mother wasn't ready for a baby. Were you ready to do what it took to get a baby? And just because you weren't ready for that is the only option, abortion? Do you have to end that baby's life because you weren't ready for the consequences of what you did? And then thirdly, of course, we'll hear it's the mother's right to choose. Is that true? Does the mother have the right to choose that that baby's going to die? Is that solely her choice? And is that right? Is that morally and ethically right in the sight of God? Those are the things that we're going to be considering as we think about the subject of the truth on abortion. Let's begin by considering that in the Bible, the Word of God does not make a distinction between a fetus and a child. Open your Bible with me to Genesis chapter 25, and I want you to see what these children here are called inside the womb. Look in Genesis chapter 25. In our world today, it's like there's some kind of magical distinction between a few millimeters of skin and a baby outside the womb. But God in His Word doesn't make that distinction. Genesis chapter 25, verses 21 through 26, we have the story of Jacob and Esau and the struggle inside their mother's womb. And, and, and listen to what is said in Genesis 25, verse 21. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea. And Rebekah his wife conceived. Now watch this. But the children struggled together within her, and she said, If all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. And of course, we know that story goes that she had twins, Jacob and Esau. Jacob ruled over Esau, and, and you remember all the story there. But here's what I want you to see. Two children are inside you. Not, it wasn't just a fetus, wasn't just a lump of flesh. Like a child on the outside, those children on the inside were considered just the same by God. Jeremiah 1 verse 5, God said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I called you to be a prophet. Speaking to Jeremiah as a unique individual, again, the idea is there's no separation. A few millimeters of skin doesn't separate from a life and non-life. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I called you to be a prophet. And then I want you to consider what God thought about what was happening in the people in the days of Amos in the minor prophet Amos 1 verse 13. I want you to consider how this relates to us today. Look in your Bible to the minor prophet Amos, Amos chapter 1. I want you to look at what the scripture says in verse number 13 about what was going on during their day and how that parallels our day today as well. The minor prophet Amos as he preaches a message of condemnation against the nations, here's what he says in verse 13. Thus says the Lord, 
For three transgressions, the word transgression means sin. For three transgressions of the people of Ammon, and for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they ripped open the women with child in Gilead, that they might enlarge their territory. What were these people doing to make themselves grow and to overcome their enemies? They ripped open. They were causing these women to lose their babies. But listen, they ripped open the women with child. Again, this wasn't non-life. This was a big deal to God. And when they were ripping those women open and the children were coming out, the, the word used for child on the outside and the inside, there's no difference. And so somehow this idea that a baby is not life, friend, that's just not found in the Bible. Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25 Mary became pregnant with child. When did, at the very earliest stages of that pregnancy, she was with child. It was a human being. It was a life. It had a soul from God. Uh, let me give you another example. Luke chapter 1. I want you to turn this one. Luke, look in Luke chapter 1 with me. This is a really vivid example. You've got Jesus and you've got John the Baptist here. And I want you to see what is seen in Luke chapter 1. Look beginning in verse 39. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. Now watch this. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in the womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice, said, Blessed are you among women, blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For, indu for indeed, soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. That word for babe there, here's what's so interesting. I don't want you to miss this. When John heard the greeting and, and the baby leaped in the womb, that word for baby, same word used on the outside for a little baby infant. Inside the womb, outside the womb. The same word is used. There's no distinction made by God between a baby in the womb and a baby outside the womb. Being inside the mother's belly doesn't make it. Think about this. If people were out, let's say there's some type of genocide, and people were out taking infant babies, two or three day old babies, out of the hospital and killing those babies and ripping them apart and doing great genocide because people would be an, a, a crazy about that. People would think that was a, one of the greatest crimes ever. And yet in the Bible, no difference between in the womb and outside the womb. It ought to be just as wrong and just as sinful to kill a baby in the womb as it is a two or three day old baby outside the womb. Where did the idea that because it's inside the mother make it any different? And so that distinction is not made inside the scripture. But if we could show you a clear passage today which shows beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is absolutely no difference between the life of an adult individual and the life of a baby in the womb. I believe Exodus 21 would be the greatest example. I want you to turn in your Bible to this passage. Look with me at Exodus 21. I want you to see that a life inside the womb to God is just as valuable as a life outside the womb. Look in Exodus chapter 21. And I want you to notice what's said in verses 22 through 25. Exodus 21, look with me in verses 22 through 25. Here's God's law for His people. If men fight and hurt a woman or a child so that she gives birth prematurely, yet no harm follows, he shall surely be punished accordingly as the woman's husband imposes on him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. But if any harm follows, don't miss this, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Now, I want you to kind of envision in your mind what's happening here. Let's say that there are two big burly men and they're going to tie up and fight. They've had a really big disagreement. They're going to tie up and they're going to have a knockdown drag out. And one man, his wife's pregnant. 
and she's there with him. And about the time one guy rears back to really lay it on the other, she steps in front, he hits her, that pregnant woman in the stomach. Well, how would you deal with something like that according to God's law? Well, Moses said if she gives birth prematurely and the baby's okay, then the judges can impose a penalty because he shouldn't have done that. He should have been more careful, and he'll have to pay the fine as the judges impose. But watch this. If that baby dies, life for life. What's that mean? That baby's life is no less value and no less life than the life of that full, a grown adult male. They're both life. Being inside the womb, does not make it, in God's eyes, any less life. That adult male who killed that baby inside the mother's womb, his life is to be forfeited for that life. Why? Because in God's eyes, both are life. Friend, isn't that a clear passage to help us see that inside a mother's womb, it's just as much life as it is outside the mother's womb? Here's how God feels about it. Open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 6. Can you imagine anything more innocent, more precious, and more beautiful than a newborn baby? You talk about innocent. There it is. Look at Proverbs chapter 6. Look beginning in verse 16. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to Him. A proud look a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Friend, we're talking about life here, and we're talking about something that could be, could not be any more precious and innocent. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not permit them, for of such is the kingdom of God. I wonder about all those hands today, all those doctors, all those nurses, whose hands have destroyed and killed and mutilated millions upon millions of lives. You know, we, we put people in prison today for murder, but according to God's Word, that's just as much wrong. That's just as much the taking of a life as any other way of doing that. And so somewhere along the way, we got the idea that it wasn't life. But friend, that's clearly not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that life begins at the point of fertilization. When an egg and a sperm come together and fertilization begins, that's life. You, Psalmist said in Psalm 139 verse 16, you knew me before I was even formed, fashioned. Uh, you, my days were prepared for me. Jeremiah 1 verse 5, I formed you in the womb. God said, Luke 1, 13 through 15, again, no separation between a child and life in the womb at the earliest stages than that outside the womb. Same words are used to describe a baby at the early stages of the womb and a baby outside the womb. God makes no distinction, and so life begins even at the earliest stages, and man has no right. It's wrong to take that life in the sight of God. Now, what is it then that oftentimes people who promote and push abortion are overlooking when they take that stand? Friend, we're overlooking the soul and the spirit. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7 says, The spirit returns to God who gave it. 2 Corinthians 4 16, Man has both a body and a spirit, and it is God who who puts the Spirit in man. Zechariah chapter 13, Hebrews verse 12, the Lord forms the Spirit within him. And so we, we're made in the image of God. It's not just flesh, and it's not just a body, and it's not a thing or an it. It's a soul. It's a spirit. It's something made in the image of God. And we think we can just discard that and destroy that and get right. Friend, that's special. That's unique. That's different than just some animal or something like that. Man has been created in the image of God. And if there's no separation between the womb being life and non-life, and we need to realize we're overlooking a big part of that with the Spirit. And so that's what distinguishes the life of humans 
from animals. Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27, God said, Let us make man in our image. In the image of God, He made them, male and female. God breathed in, here it is, God breathed in the man the breath of life. There's the spirit. Man became a living soul. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and that separates us and makes us unique in that sense. Now then, let's think about some practical solutions. There's no doubt that the problem of abortion is a very, very serious problem. People get up in arms when you say abortion is wrong, we shouldn't do that. Well, let's think about some practical solutions to the problem. What can we do about the problem of abortion? What can we do to stop it? What can we do to help those who are considering it? And friend, as Christians, when we think about the problem of abortion, we need to stand up and be heard. We need to let God, this is a country, this is a country that was founded on the belief in God we trust. This is a country where we still swear people in office, where we still, people pl still place their hand on the Bible as the Word of God, and although we may be getting further from that, Christians need to stand up and be heard. We need to vote based on those who are going to stand for God's truth and God's Word, and we need to help people realize abortion is not the answer. Friend, think about this with me. There are so many people. I know couples right now. You can probably think of people right now uh, who would love. They haven't been able to have children on their own. They would be happy to adopt a baby. Why do we have to choose abortion instead of adoption? There's always another option and another solution. But then the practical application is this. Friend, we've got to draw a line somewhere so we can avoid the temptation of abortion. Where's, we need to, here's what we can do to help. We need to teach young people, and we need to help young people to see marriage is honorable, the bed undefiled, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. The right and holy and good place for relations between a man and a woman is inside the bound of marriage, inside the bond of marriage. That's where the home and the family are designed to flourish. Before that, People need to abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. If we can help more young people to see, this is not an act you need to be involved in. There are consequences, and pregnancy can happen, and you're not ready for that. We need to teach that that's designed to be inside the bonds of marriage. And then this, what should be our attitude towards such an atrocity like abortion? I want you to open your Bible to Matthew chapter 2, and this ought to be our attitude. Look in Matthew chapter 2. In the days of Jesus Christ, there was an atrocity occurring, and the Bible tells us about that, and my attitude and yours should be similar. Matthew chapter 2, verses 16 through 18. Then Herod when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Uh, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Friend, when you read this passage, you can, you can hear God's outcry, the people's outcry about what Herod is doing. Friend, when we realize that there's no distinction between life in the womb and life outside the womb, we ought to have an outcry. People ought to be upset and angry and, and want to do what's right with that. And so we want to plead with people to take a stand and do what's right as it relates to abortion and things like that. And then, of course, we want in love and in kindness to help people see the truth. Are, are, we, are we passionate about life? Absolutely. It's special. It's unique. We're not talking about uh, something you could just throw away and discard like a piece of trash? That's not what we're talking about. 
We're talking about something special and unique, and, and, and children are a gift from God. Psalm 127, verse 3. But in kindness and love, we want to point people toward what the Bible says. Friend, all of us, you know, here's where, here's the hypocrisy of what we're talking about today. If a person were caught, just think about this with me. If a person's caught destroying the egg of a bald eagle, did you know he can face time in prison and be, be fined up to two hundred plus thousand dollars? And yet, you can destroy a human life in the womb, in its process of formation, and that's legal? We protect a bird, but we don't protect people? Can't we see the hypocrisy and the inconsistency in that? And so as God's people, we want to take a stand for what's right. Are, are we saying we need to be mean? Of course not. Are we saying we need to be unkind? Are we saying we need to do something violent or ungodly? Absolutely not. But are we saying we need to let our voices be heard? Are we saying we need to teach God's truth? Are we saying that from the rooftop, we ought to proclaim what God says about the value of life? Absolutely. And we want people to see how special and how precious that is. And so, again, we know this is a rather controversial subject. We understand that. But, friend, we also understand our desire is to please God more than men. I'm going to give an account of God, and so are you to God, and so are you. One day I'm going to be judged by the words of God. And unless we put God in His Word as our hope and our trust, friend, that's not going to be a very good day for any person who doesn't do that. And so the encouragement today is let's value human life. Let's not destroy it. Let's value it. Let's realize it's special. God gives life. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. That's His right and not man's. And let's help in this situation in every way we can. As always, we want to encourage you today to visit the Lord's Church in your area. If you'd like to study more about this subject, you'd like to know more on the teachings of God's Word about that, people at the Lord's Church would be happy to talk to you. We'd be happy to help you here at the Gospel of Christ as well. And friend, our hope and prayer is that we can help in situations where there are moral dilemmas by simply pointing people to what God's Word says. If the Bible matters to you, and if God and heaven and eternal life and spiritual things concern you, our hope and prayer today is that we have pointed you toward what the Word of God says. You can check it for yourself, and you'll make your decisions based on God's Word. Thank you for joining us today, and we encourage you to join us next time as we'll study more on the subject of truth. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.